Hello, world. Have you ever played Sudoku and lost really, really miserably? I have. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement a Sudoku solver in Python using recursion so that you don't ever have to be frustrated by one of those guys ever again. Woo! Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to define our function solve Sudoku and we want to pass in our puzzle. Basically, this function is going to solve Sudoku using a backtracking technique. So our puzzle that we pass in is a list of lists where each inner list is actually a row in the Sudoku puzzle. So basically, this represents the 9x9 nine nine puzzle. And we're turning whether or not the solution exists. But in this code, remember how lists are mutable. So we're actually mutating this puzzle to be the solution if the solution exists. So the first step is I'm actually going to see where on the puzzle I can go. So as a human, when we're playing Sudoku, we typically go from where we have the most information, whether it's the column that's most filled out or the row or the little tiny three by three box. But because we have a computer, we don't have to do that. What we can do is we can assign a number to any open space on the board, and then we can try essentially every single combination as long as it's valid. And when we see that it's not valid, we can actually go back and say, oh, let's not try three, let's try four instead. And if you think about the entire puzzle, you can essentially come up with like every single combination. Oh, it doesn't work from there. Okay, well, let's take a step back and try all the combinations there. If none of those work, then we take another step back and try all the combinations there and so on. And our computer is actually powerful enough to do that. So that's the technique that we're gonna use here. So our first step is actually to choose somewhere on the board to make a guess. In order to do this, I'm gonna create a helper function called find next empty and pass in the puzzle so I can find the open spaces on the board. So here I'm gonna define find next empty, pass in puzzle. And essentially this function is gonna find the next row column on the puzzle that's not filled yet. And in our puzzle, we're representing any open spaces with negative one. So we basically want to return the next space that equals negative one. So we're going to return the index of the row. So that's if this is a list of lists, the first index that we return is the location in that first list that our empty space is at. The second value that we're returning is within that row, which index is it at? And then of course, there might be a situation where our entire board is filled and there's no empty spaces left. In that case, we're gonna return a tuple none comma none. So keep in mind that we're actually zero indexing. So we're starting from zero and our last index is eight. So essentially what I can do is I can just go in order. I can say, hey, check each row and then check each column. And whatever the first empty space you get, I'm just gonna return the row comma column value of that. So here I can do for each row in range nine, so I'm iterating through my nine rows, and then I can say for that row, for each column value in range nine, so that's my zero through eight, if the puzzle, and then here's how we index, we pick out the row, and then within that row, we use C to index again and get the column. So here, this double indexing basically is returning the item in the rth row, and the seed column. And then if that equals negative one, then basically we return that RC. Otherwise, we return none comma none. If we've iterated through this entire puzzle and nothing equals negative one, then that means that there's no spaces in the puzzle left. So we can return none comma none. Okay, so then the second step from there is, well, if there's nowhere left, we're going to be implementing some validation checks of like whether our guess is actually valid or not. And so if we filled out this entire puzzle, then that means we're actually done. So here I'm going to say if row is none, so remember that above we return none comma none, and then that first none gets assigned to row, the second none gets assigned to column. So we only have to check one of them. Now if row is none, then we can return true because we've actually solved our puzzle. But if we haven't, then we can keep going. All right, step two is basically, if there's a place to put our guess, then 
we want to come up with a guess between one and nine. And we want to actually try all of them until we find a combination that works. So I'm going to say for guess in range one comma 10. We start the next step, step three, which is checking if this is a valid guess. Okay, so here I'm going to use another helper function is valid, and I'm going to pass in the puzzle, guess, row, and column, because those, those are the key pieces of information that we need in order to determine whether or not this guess at this row and column is valid in our puzzle. So those are the four parameters that we need. And here I'm going to define the function is valid, and this basically figures out whether the guess at that row or column of the puzzle is valid. And so if there's no conflicts, then we consider it valid and then we return true. We return false if it's not. So now we have to follow Sudoku rules. If our guess equals anything that exists in that row or the column already, or even the little three by three matrix that it's in, then it's not valid. So let's actually start with the row because that one's the easy one, right? Every single list within our puzzle represents a row. So if we have the row index, then we can just say that the row values are equal to the puzzle index at the row. So if our guess is in row values, then we can return false. All right, now the columns. The columns are a little bit trickier because we actually vary which row we're indexing into, but we index at the same spot within each row. So what we can do is we can create a new list called column values, and we can say, for each row, I'm, I can say for i in range 9, so that will go through all the rows, I'm going to append the value at puzzle at the ith row at the call column. And so another way to write this actually is using a list comprehension where I can say take puzzle and then index into i and then within that row index into call and then do that for i in range 9. And then that's essentially going to build the exact same list. So then if the guess is in those values, then we return false because it means that it's in our column. And then now the, the little three by three square matrix. So this part's a little bit trickier because we actually have to figure out where in the three by three grid we are. And so to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the starting index of the row of that three by three matrix. And then we're gonna find the starting column index of that three by three matrix. And then we're gonna say for each row, for each of the columns within that three, we're gonna iterate. So what we can do in order to find this is actually take the row index and divide it by three, but throw away the remainder. What is like, for example, if I have one divided by three, that comes out to point three through three. So the base or whatever you want to call it is zero. And then five divided by three, well, the remainder is two, but three goes into five one time. So I'm going to return one. So then I can take that and I can figure out if it's in the first set of three rows, the second set of three rows, or the third set of three rows. And then of course, in order to get like the actual index of that, I have to multiply that value by three. And then it's the exact same logic for the columns. So when I get row start, I'm trying to get the start value of these chunks, right? But then when I'm getting the column, I'm getting the start value of these chunks. Maybe it's the other way around on YouTube. When I have both of the starts, I can say, hey, now we're gonna iterate through this. So I can say for R in range, row start comma, row start plus three, because we wanna iterate through the three rows, for C in range, call start to call start plus three because we want to iterate through three columns. If the value at the puzzle equals our guess, so that means our guess is already in this three by three matrix, so we just have to return false. And now at the very end, if we've passed all of these checks and we haven't returned false yet, that means that, well, it is valid and we can return true. All right, so let's close those functions. Okay, now back to our Sudoku code. So if is valid is true, then we want to actually place that guess on the puzzle at that row comma column. 
So what we can do is we can say puzzle index at the row, index at the column is now equal to our guess. So we're actually mutating this puzzle array. So now in step four, we're going to recursively call our function. Because if I guess one number, then that number is actually mutated in my list of lists. And I can pass that in as my puzzle. And then the next value becomes mutated and then so on until we reach the very end. So that's essentially what we're doing here. We're just solving this entire thing with this new guess in our array. So if that comes out as true, then we know that we've actually solved our Sudoku puzzle, so we can return true. But of course, there's also the case where, where this is valid check might not be valid. And there's also this case of, well, what if we didn't solve the Sudoku when we tried that guess in the row and column? So then in this case, we actually need to backtrack. We need to say, hey, so this guess was wrong. Let's reset it and move on to the next guess. So here I'm gonna say puzzle row call equals negative one because we didn't successfully place anything there. So we're essentially just resetting the value at this row and column. And now you can imagine this for loop is gonna go over you know, all the possible values, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, for every single empty spot along this entire puzzle, right? So that means we're literally trying every single possible combination for the Sudoku. So in our last step, if we've tried every single combination possible and none of them work, then that means that we actually can't find a solution. So this puzzle is unsolvable. And then we're gonna return false. All right, so let's actually test this to prove that it works. Okay, so python3 sudoku.py, we see that it comes out as true, and this is our board. So let's try resizing this to see if we can like actually view this as a board. Okay, there we go. Let's do a couple of checks just to make sure that like our solution is actually true. So in this first box up here, let's do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, and then this column, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that's pretty convincing that like this is actually a good solution. Okay, so a couple of notes about my implementation. Recursion is confusing. Recursion kind of makes your brain hurt. I think it might be better understood this way. Think about solve Sudoku as a black box. It should be able to mutate the input puzzle so that it's a solution if it's a valid input puzzle. Now, if it's not a valid input puzzle, well then it should be able to identify that because we've tried every single combination for that puzzle. So when we make a new guess, we can pass this new guess as a puzzle into our solve Sudoku function. And if it's solvable, then we know that our guess was a correct guess and we've actually reached a solution. Now, if it's not solvable, well, then we know that that guess that we passed in, it's not a solvable Sudoku solution. So we can say, okay, that wasn't the right guess. So now let's move on to the next one. And this is how we kind of go through this entire puzzle and mutate the Sudoku array that we originally pass in to be the correct answer. I hope that clears things up for you guys. All right, now if you guys wanna try this for yourself in my GitHub link, which I've included below, what you can do is you can download the code and I've included an empty Sudoku template. And I've included the steps on there to kind of help you through it. So you can give that a try. And honestly, what we're doing in the Sudoku implementation is we're basically taking a random guess and saying, hey, does this work? Does this work? Does this work? Okay, no, go back. Does this work now? And so it's probably not the most optimal solution. It's probably not going to be the Sudoku, Python, Sudoku solving winner. A fun little exercise might be to walk through this code and see what optimizations you can make to it. Can you make this code perform any better, any faster than it's currently doing? Can you make it go through less steps in order to get to that final solution. And if you think you can, you can message me your solution. You can make a pull request on GitHub and I might include your solution in my GitHub files. So 